In this lecture, we'll be talking about Docker containers. So Docker container or the OCI container or just the container all refers to the same exact thing in the Docker world. And we have discussed about the Docker images in our last lecture. And in order to make that Docker image to run in an action, we are gonna run them as what is called as containers. So basically, Docker containers are the runtime instances of the Docker images itself. They encapsulate the application and its environments, ensuring it runs consistently across different system. That is the major power of the containers. You can just throw this container to any of the environment. It is going to just run exactly the same way. That is the definition of the Docker itself. And that is really happening because it's all going to happen from within the container. So container is one of the most important runtime instance that we are talking about in Docker world. And there are even more advantages of having a Docker container. Most importantly, Docker containers are self-contained, meaning each container has everything it needs to function with no reliance on any pre-installed dependencies on the host machine. So if you're gonna run the Docker container using the Windows machine or Linux machine or Mac operating system, it doesn't care because all it needs is to have a Docker engine and all the dependencies and its related libraries are going to sit within the docker container itself so it's going to be just self-contained it doesn't rely on a host machine or host operating system and similarly every container are isolated meaning they run in a complete isolation and they have minimal influence on the host as well as other containers which is the another great important functionality of a Docker container, and this increases the security of your applications as well. And also, it is independent, meaning each container is independently managed. So deleting one container won't affect any other container. So all other containers will keep running, even though you delete one. And finally, it is very, very portable, meaning containers can run anywhere. As I told you, Docker runs in the CI CD pipeline. It runs on a local machine. It runs anywhere, regardless so that is the real power of the container as well. But in order to understand how the Docker container really works, we first of all need to understand how the Docker itself work behind the scene. So in order for that, I'm gonna show you a quick architecture of how the Docker really working behind the scene for you. Because we have been talking about Docker all these days, we just have to understand how Docker works. As we know that we will have a machine which is going to be built using an x64 or x86 or ARM CPU architecture and then it is going to have a memory, disk and network. All these are going to include within our physical machine and then we're going to have a host operating system which could be a Windows, Linux or a Mac operating system. And on the top, we're going to have our Docker engine running in order to take care of the downloading of the image and spinning a container and taking care of networking and everything for you. So you will see that there are gonna be different containers as you can see over here. It's gonna have a container with the .NET and Python in it. And there's gonna be a container with the SQL Server and Node.js. It could be an application and this could be an application. And similarly, there is gonna be another container which is gonna be running PHP. And this could be another container as well. You can spin multiple different containers at the same time based on how much you wanted to run for your application need. Well, this is in a nutshell how the Docker really works. Well, now you may have a question saying, hey, Karthik, why does it really matter? It looks like the Docker container sounds pretty much like a virtual machine right now because it is gonna have all the dependencies, as you said, it's gonna have the application itself within a container and also it's gonna have all the dependencies in it. So what is the major difference between both of them? Well, guess what? In Docker world, the architecture is gonna remain this one, like it's gonna have a bare metal machine, it's gonna have a host operating system, Docker engine, and different containers, right? That's what we saw in our earlier slide. But if you take a virtual machine, it's gonna be running using probably Hyper-V or VMware or maybe VirtualBox, you will see that there is gonna be a bare metal machine and a host operating system, but you'll also see that it's gonna be an hypervisor. So this hypervisor is going to be the one that I was talking about, the VMware or Hyper-V that you name it. And this hypervisor is going to run multiple different virtual machines for you. But you will note that all these virtual machines that it is trying to run over here are all going to be different operating systems. It could be a Windows operating system and then it's going to have the .NET and Python in it. And then it is going to have all the dependencies and the driver related stuff over here. So it's going to be like a complete machine running on the top of an hypervisor. 
And similarly, you can have another exact same machine, but now you will notice that it's gonna have an entirely new operating system in it. So you will notice that every single time when you run a hypervisor, it's gonna have an entirely new operating system and the size of every single virtual machine is gonna be entirely different. It's gonna have like 14 gig and this virtual machine is gonna have another 14 gig because it's gonna have an entire operating system in it. And similarly, if you have another virtual machine, it's gonna be another 14 GB as well. It's so like every single machine that you see is gonna be a 14 gig or 15 gig, depend on the version of operating system that you're installing and the application that is holding inside that virtual machine. But in the container world, it's gonna be entirely different because every single container are gonna share the operating system or the kernel from one single place, which is from the Docker itself. I will talk about this architecture even further while we get to the understanding of the Docker architecture. But for now, just understand that Docker containers are not same as virtual machine. It is entirely different to both of them. So with this understanding, let's try to go and spin up the image that we downloaded in our last lecture. So I'm gonna go over here to the Nginx image that we downloaded in our last lecture, and we are gonna run this particular image right now. I mean, you can run this image in many different ways. You can use the Docker CLI, which we are gonna be discussing in our next lecture, or you can also use this Docker desktop for doing that. So you can see that there is gonna be a run button over here. This is gonna help you to run this particular Docker image itself directly. So let's try to run this. So if I just go and hit this particular run from the action, you will see that there's gonna be a new window presented for me. And it says that there is an optional settings available for you. Where in this optional setting, you can give the name of the container. You see that now we have got the container over here. So we are running this image as a container. So you can give any name that you want to. So I can probably give uh, probably like a uh, test demo container of nginx, whatever that you name it. Uh, or if you don't give any container name, then a random name is gonna be generated for you if you don't provide it. That is what is gonna happen. And then you can also specify the host port over here. Now you may be asking, what is this host port and what is this another colon of the port slash TCP? Well, we'll talk about these while we get into the networking of the Docker, but at least for now, just assume that this host port is gonna be the port number that is needed for this host operating system, the Windows 11 operating system, to access the containers application from. So this port number is gonna be the application port or the containers port, and this port that I'm specifying is gonna be the host port, which is gonna be the port which I'm gonna use to access from. So I'm gonna just say 80 as well. And then you can specify some environment variables if you wanted to, uh, and then if you just hit the run button. So we'll talk about the environment variables once we run another image later, like a SQL Server image. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this as it is, and I'm gonna hit this run over here. And once I run it, you will notice that there's gonna be a list of logs coming up for me automatically from the Nginx over here. And note that this is for the first time we're seeing that this particular image, while it is running as a container, it is running on the operating system, which is Linux operating system. And you see that it is running using the Microsoft standard WSL2. That's what I was talking about. The Windows subsystem for Linux 2 needs to be installed in your machine. And because you remember, we were using the engine as a WSL2 during the installation process, that's the engine being used and that's the operating system being used over here. And now the worker has been started. This is pretty much exactly the same Nginx that you try to run it from your normal installation. That's what is happening from the container this time, which is great. And now we also have an inspect tab. So if I go and hit this inspect tab, you will be presented with a bunch of detail. But before I get into too much of theory about these details, let me go and click this 80 colon 80 over here. It's automatically taking me to the local host of 80. So once I hit this guy over here, you see that we are now welcome to an Nginx page. So the Nginx server or the web server is currently successfully installed and it's working. Do you see that the port number right now is 80 for me? Like if you just specify probably port number 
90 and if you try to run this it is not going to work because we have exposed the port number as 80 in our installation process so 80, 88 also not going to work so if i just say 80 it is going to work because that's what we exposed the port from the container to the host machine while we were spinning up the image as a container so hope you got the idea of how this is working. And every single time when I try to perform any action on the web browser, it is also giving me a log information from that particular machine automatically coming up over here, as you can see, which is great. And now let's get into the inspect part. So if I go to the inspect part, you will notice that there are so many details available over here. And these were not there like seven years before while I started creating the Docker uh, series in the YouTube but now so many things have changed you can do every single thing from the docker desktop itself it's going to show you details of this particular container and also it tells you what is even happening behind the scene it tells you that there is a create a date of this particular container which is today and also tell me the path of the entry point of this particular uh, docker image which is going to be an ssh file and also it tells me there is an argument that it is an nginx and hyphen g and there is a daemon as off being set and their state currently is running and you can see them more details and there are even further details that are available pretty much like networking port which is being exposed and you see that the whole port number is 80 with the tcp and this is the host port of 80 that we set while we are trying to run the container so that's been set up over here as well and there are some restart policy and everything which we'll get there once we get to the Docker even further detail. But for now, yeah, that's what is the detail for us over here. And then there is something called as bind mount if we did any, but we have not. And there is an EXEC, which is something that you can use to see what's running inside this particular container. Meaning you can do an LS right now, pretty much like list all the directory. Then you can see all the directory which are running inside that particular container. You see that the docker entry.sh file, which is the entry file we saw while we were doing the inspect, this path, that's been shown over here in this particular file. So if you have any of the VIM or whatever uh, in the uh, docker container, you can run that, but guess what? VM will not be installed in the docker container by itself. Either we need to install it or we need to add a layering on the top of this image to make that happen but you can read through these files from another means which i will talk about once we get there but at least for now you see all the files being displayed using the exec option it is pretty much like a command prompt or the terminal of the running container and finally this files you see that it is also showing you all the different files information which is from that particular docker container so you see that there is a boot, which is the entry point of this particular operating system. There is a dev folder and there is a ETC folder and there is the entry point folder once again. So you can probably download this file and see what's really going on. And you can also see that there is the whole lot of files and operating system related stuffs over here coming up. And the stats, this is important as well. You can see how much time it takes for your container to run so you can see that there is a cpu usage there is a memory usage and there is a network io and stuff so all these details are going to be come up for you based on the number of resources that you are really using so yeah it's kind of slow in my machine but that's how it is going to be shown over here for you and if i go to the containers tab right now which we have not seen so far you will see that we have our nginx container up and running which is this test demo container of nginx which i created as a custom name while i was spinning up the container which is cool the status is running the port is here the cpu usage is zero percentage so now i can even stop the container view the files and open in the command prompt like pretty much what i just showed you on the uh, on the container while i click this and all these details you can see it from this menu as well right Hope you got the idea of how the containers are being spinned up and how much memory it's been used and most importantly you need to see that the total number of memory which is used by this whole nginx even though it is running on a linux operating system it is just 18.98 mb just consider this if you're running a virtual machine and then you're running a linux operating system on it and then if you run the nginx on it 
it's going to take at least 7 GB of yours. But now this is just running in 18.98. And guess what? The WSL itself is very, very small footprint as well, comparing to the 6 GB of the Linux operating system. So the containers are really good comparing to the virtual machine. And it is quite awesome. And you will get to know about the further details of the container once we get along this course. But for now, you got the idea of how it works. And finally, before you wind up, I'm going to stop the container. And once I stop the container, you will see that the container is still exited as a status over here, but still the container can be spawned up from the place where you have left it. You can click the start button and it still runs from the place where you have left. But if you want to remove the container completely, you can just go ahead and click this delete button from here to remove the container. So it's going to just delete it for you. And any anonymous volumes associated with this container will also be deleted. Well, you may ask, what is this volumes? We'll talk about the Docker volumes in our further upcoming lectures of this course. But for now, this is what is volume. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is for our next lecture while we talk about the Docker CLI, but hope you got the idea of how the Docker container works and what Docker containers are.